Hello, this is Brian from SkateMD Fire and Rescue Solutions, and this is going to be a quick demo of the G1 pager programming software. Unlike the last video I did, it ended up being 43 minutes. We're going to do this one in about 5 or 10 minutes, and we're going to go real fast through the basics. So once you have your uh, pager programming software loaded, you'll get a login screen. You're going to go down here to the bottom and press login. If your uh, paging cradle is already connected, you want to go over here to the PPS system settings and choose your COM port. Um, my cradle is not connected, but normally it'd be like COM5, COM8, it'll be a higher number because it's a USB, it's not going to be your, your serial port. All right, once you're done with that, you could hit the program pager with red pager code data. That would import your pager data. Uh, we do not have the cradle connected, so we're going to open a file from the computer. So we're going to hit program page with the existing code plug file. We're going to go ahead and open up a file. As you can see here is all your basic information, serial number, band split, pager type, inventory control numbers, group name, usernames. Inventory control number, group name, username are all uh, programmer defined. We're going to go down to the pager configuration settings. Here are all your global settings for the pager. These change different things. Um, Key lock is defaulted to off in most cases. I'd like to turn that on. Down here you'll see pleasing tone 1. These are your programmable tone settings. So you can make it kind of beep however you want when it goes off for a call. Um, 28 and 0, 28 and 0 all the way across gives you a minotaur sound. And so on and so forth. You can program these however you would like. Moving right along, we're going to go to the call source text prompt settings. This here is what um, alpha tags can be assigned to your two-tone sequential pages or long tones. So this is kind of important to fill out later on in the programming because you'll need these alpha tags to assign to the tones that we put in in the tone table settings. Um, we're going to skip the MDC stuff. That's some advanced stuff and you, if you want to hear some more about that you can watch the advanced video that's also on my YouTube account. The call ID cap code settings tab. As you can see here you have eight different tone tables for um, tones and then you have eight tables for MDC. We're not going to touch on the MDC stuff um, but we will talk about the tone table list here. Here you choose um, your tone table. You can have two tone or a five tone setting um, and you can do multiple tables. And double click on that you'll see that the paging type the tone type is two tone and the paging system is Motorola. Notice that calls 1 through 12 contain a short tone as long tone is turned off and tones 13 through 16 are long tones so you'll have two I'm sorry you have 12 um, spaces for two tone sequential paging and four spaces for your long tone activations or all calls notice here when you click on this you can either type in your tone frequency or you can pull from a chart now this changes depending on your tone system Plectron and, and Reach use different tones uh, and different tone tables, so you would see different tables if you had a different system selected. Uh, remember when I said the, the call source text prompt would be important in the tone settings? Here's that drop down list of the, the alpha tags that we, as, we typed in in the call source text settings. The alert tone, this is where you choose how the pager, what the pager beeps with when there's a call. Pleasing tone one was the minotaur sound. The backlight would be red when there is a call, and it does store voice. If we go down here and look at the EMS setting, you can see that they use Pleasing Tone 2, so it sounds different than a fire call, and there's a blue backlight. So when you're looking at the pager and a call goes off, red would be fire, blue is going to be EMS. And then you have your stored voice settings, of course, and you want to leave that on. Moving right along here to channel parameter settings. Channel parameter settings is where you can type in all your different frequencies. These don't have to be in any particular order. This is strictly a database with your frequencies. Um, the way we have this particular pager set up is we have like different profiles. So there's a Marion Fire, a Marion EMS, a Marion Fire Department, an EMS, Somerset, Main. All four of these are the same frequencies. The difference is there are different tones are assigned to the channel. So this has just a fire tone, this one has just the EMS tone. This is the fire and EMS tone, uh, and then Somerset Main is the channel we use for monitoring um, on the pager, and this listens to fire and EMS also. Now, 
you might ask why you need to do this. You don't really need to do this. If you have one tone or two tones and you want the pager to go off all the time, uh, regardless of what setting you're in, then you only have to make one channel and put all your tones under that channel. Um, you'll see later on how we have this set up in the pager. Notice we have the weather channels and we also have the marine channels and some mutual aid departments in other counties that are nearby. Uh, the bandwidth, the 12.5 hertz, or I'm sorry, 12.5 kilohertz is narrow band, 25 kilohertz is wide band. So if you're on a narrow banded system, you want to make sure that this is set to 12.5 kilohertz. Um, just so we can see how this is set up, we're going to click on one of these and show you inside here. You also obviously have to make the channel enabled. You can type in your channel name, which will display on the screen. Um, it will also display in scan mode when that particular channel is talking if you do have a scan group set up. Notice that we have narrowband, their frequency. They do not have a PL or DPL tone, so we have this set to CSQ. Now you can change this to the CTCSS and choose a tone if you want from this drop down menu. Um, that's part of the step you need to do to use a PL tone. There's more to using a PL tone further into the video that we'll talk about. Let's go ahead and turn this back off. We're not using that. Here you'll see your squelch level. You have three settings. It's very sensitive, normal, and then less sensitive. You have the expander and the emphasis features. Here is where you choose your tones for that channel. So notice that we have to two tone and it's table one. We know that call one from table one is fire and call two from table one is EMS. Um, your off duty settings, if one of these tones you needed to be activated on, even when you're off duty, you could turn the pager into off duty mode. And if this was selected, this page tone would go off even when your pager was in off duty. Priority mode ignores um, any vibrator silent settings and gives you a loud alert whenever a tone goes off. So this would be good for like a an emergency alert, a tone alert for like a weather emergency or a tornado warning that you always want to be alerted for no matter what. Um, down here you'll have your MDC settings which we won't talk about because this is going to be the short video. I'm go down here to the manual scan settings. This here are two different versions of scanning. These you do not need to use if you want tone alert on your scan modes. This is strictly for a novice or a, maybe a more advanced user. Uh, manual scan, there's channel scan and free scan. Channel scan allows you to choose every channel in the pager and scan it. So if you have 19 frequencies in the pager, you can scan all 19 frequencies and assign that to a selector position on the uh, pager itself. Free scan allows you to choose a frequency range that you're able to monitor. So say you have a lot of frequencies between 154 and 155 um, that you may need to switch to but you don't necessarily have programmed into the pager. You can set this up so that it'll give you that functionality. So now when you go to whatever position you set the free scan option up on you can actually use the front arrows to scroll through the frequency and choose a frequency you want to listen to cool feature for a novice or an advanced user or someone who always needs to change frequencies for whatever reason. For all intents and purposes we're gonna keep that off. We're gonna go down to the regular scan list. This scan list here allows you to choose what channels are gonna scan in a certain list and then each list number can be assigned to a switch on the pager. So you'd want to go ahead and set this up accordingly. This one here is being used for a dual channel scan and it monitors their main and their ops channel. Here we have the weather which scans all seven weather channels and basically what happens with putting it into a normal scan mode later on you'll it'll stop on whichever weather channel it gets a reception on. We also scan the Coast Guard channels and this particular scan group has the Coast Guard and their main ops main and ops uh, channels. They are a, a waterfront county so I thought that the Marine Challenge would probably be a good idea for a Marine call so they hear what the Coast Guard's doing um, and also hear their fire and operations channel. <clears throat> now those are your scan lists. Let's go ahead and go down to the receiving portfolio settings. Here you have eight zones that are selectable from the front um, from the programming panel on the front of the pager and in your settings on the pager I should say. The First zone is their main zone, which is the Marion Fire Zone, and it's got knobs one through eight. You can see how this pager is set up. And remember when I said that you could 
have different profiles for fire and EMS. This is why you needed to set it up that way because here you choose what the pager says and also um, what tones it goes off for are all assigned in this position and this has to be set up in your tones and your frequencies for you to be able to set it up here properly. If you just had one channel that said Somerset Main, you wouldn't have the functionality of choosing between fire and EMS tones without using the on or off duty feature, which may or may not cover what, you're, what you may need to do with your pager. So here you can see we have selective call fire, selective call EMS, selective call fire and EMS, and then they have a monitor mode for Somerset Main. All four of these are the same frequency. Um, the, the difference is these are off unless there's a call and then they can choose which calls they want to get alerted for by choosing to switch to one, two, or three on top of the pager. And then four is a monitor mode of their county, which also monitors fire and EMS. Um, we also put a monitor mode in for their operations channel. And we put a dual channel scan feature in that monitors main and ops. And then normal scan three listens to the weather. Normal scan six is the Coast Guard. So it's all on the top of their pager. There's no special stuff they have to type in or do on the pager for it to work properly. Let's go ahead and click on here so you can see what this looks like inside. Here are your function options, and these are the options you get. You get a selective call, which is off until there's a call. Then it would beep, vibrate, or however you have it set up, and you'd hear the call. And it would stay open until you reset the uh, pager. The monitor mode will be, we'll put the pager into a uh, monitor state, and that can be assigned to whichever position you'd like. Normal scan is a probability scan. It will stop on whichever channel has uh, voice on it first. Priority scan will always look back for the first assigned channel if it's held up on channels two through eight. Silent scan monitors multiple channels for tones and if it activates, um, it'll activate for tones on any of the channels that it's scanning that are programmed into your pager. Dual channel scan is pretty much the same as normal scan, except it's limited to two channels. And then we talked about channel scan and free scan. Here you would choose your channel that you want selective call or monitor mode or whichever mode you may be in. If this is a scan list, uh, it would show you a scan list versus a uh, actual single channel. The reset mode, there's a couple of options. There's automatic, delay on delay and auto, revert, timeout, manual, delay and revert. Um, for most purposes, you're going to use delay and revert so you don't lose your voice file. If you have it go straight to revert or automatic, it may not record the voice if your dispatcher uh, drops the carrier squelch after the tones are dropped and takes more than a half a second or so to key up with the call information. Push to listen keeps the audio off unless you press the side button to um, the side reset button to listen. Privacy mode completely disables audio so you can't hear any of the voice traffic on the dispatch channel. Voice storage is your voice memo feature. Um, this records the call as it comes in after the uh, tones go out. And then the request for CTCSS or CDCSS, this was the second part of the PL tone that I said if you had activated in your frequency or your channel information, you'd have to turn this on to um, only listen to the coded frequency. The alert mode, this is also user programmable from the front of the pager, but you can choose your different alert modes as you can see here. Let's go down here to one of the scans so you can see how the scan feature works. When you choose a scan feature as your function mode, you'll get all your scan lists. You just kind of have to know which scan lists are which. If you're not sure, you can always pop back to the scan list parameter settings and see which scan lists have which channels and then choose from there. All the other settings stay the same as we talked about before. Once you're done with all that, save your file and make sure the pager is in the cradle firmly and uh, secure and press the right pager button and in about 15 seconds it'll program the pager. I recommend turning off the pager and turning it back on and you'll have all your uh, program information in your pager. This completes the quick demonstration of the uh, G1 pager programming software and this is Brian from uh, ScanMD Fire and Rescue Solutions.
you can visit our website at uh, scanmdstore.com and uh, have a great day.